Hello. Welcome to the audiovisual translation of the BBI report. I am grateful for you having taken your time to come listen to this audiovisual report. This marks the beginning of Chapter 6 of 12 of the report and Annex 1, 2 and 3. Kindly note we will have the translation of the BBI report chapter after chapter until we reach the last chapter of the report. Also note, this audiovisual report is created by the use of text synthesizer, hence there might be alliteration in the pronunciation of some words, particularly Swahili words, but this is not a big issue as you can clearly decode all the wording in this audiovisual report. Kindly feel free to share the link to this report with other members of our community. Having said that without farther ado let's jump into chapter 6 of 12 of the report. <laughs> Chapter 6. Inclusivity. 89. Kenya is blessed with a diverse population in terms of race, ethnicity, culture, religion, and social and economic circumstances. Added to this are perspectives informed by people's gender, age, and disability status. This diversity means that citizens' interests, priorities, capabilities, and experiences are highly complex. It also means that there is a massive store of solutions and approaches to our many challenges if we are open to utilizing our diversity. One of the greatest strengths of democracy and public policies run on behalf of all citizens is the ability to tap into that diversity to allow different Kenyans from many backgrounds to contribute fully in our political, economic, social and cultural life. This requires that Kenya be inclusive. 90. In its consultations, the task force heard a lot about the desire for inclusivity and came to understand that Kenyans have a very particular ethnic interpretation of this principle that is changing fast, particularly due to rapid urbanization. Despite the constitution's attempts to entrench inclusivity, in general the political elite and its followers and supporters are certain that missing being represented in the executive branch is exclusion. There also exists a political elite of professionals and opportunity seekers who believe that only by their fellow ethnic being in the executive can they get access to the resources, jobs, and opportunities accessed through government. They in turn are also connected to millions more economically disadvantaged Kenyans who have been brought up on systems of patronage that seem to demand that one or more of their own must be in power for their lot to improve. 91. It is no exaggeration to argue that ethnic mobilization for the sake of capturing executive power is the most potent organizing and rallying force in Kenyan political life. The premium placed on the control of executive power to control state resources poses a clear danger to the stability of the constitutional order. The current debate on changes to the structure of the executive, coming after the highly divisive and politically volatile 2017 electoral season, has reopened these fault lines in the structure of the political and constitutional order. 92. The common thread that runs through most of the current proposals for reform is the theme of dissipating executive authority, both as a way of taming the potential for executive overreach and as a way of broadening the political leadership. 93. Broadly speaking, Kenyans recognize that not every ethnic community can be represented at the top of government, inclusion therefore does not mean every ethnic group having its chosen individuals lead the executive and the other heights of the national and county governments. Kenyans believe there is inclusion when there is no perceived or real capture of the national or county executive by narrow ethnicized interests, whose decision-making and resource-sharing excludes those of other ethnic groups. 94. According to Kenyans who made presentations to the task force, the following are the essential qualities of inclusivity. a. That government appointments are manifestly reflective of the face of Kenya. b. That there is equal representation of all Kenyans regarding the ability to vote. c. That decision-making visibly flows from deliberations, debates, and participation by people who reflect most political interests in Kenya. d. Women want to take their place in leadership at all levels and believe that measures to comply with the two-thirds gender rule and ensure women are visible in leadership will establish a more level playing field when it comes to electoral competition. e. That the government in its decisions and actions responds positively and visibly to the needs and concerns of most Kenyans, as expressed in their absolute numbers, ethnicity, and counties of residence. f. That the government does not regard itself as being in the exclusive service of the majority, but is also a protector of minorities, such as people with disabilities and ethnic and religious groups with low populations. g. That the government in the implementation of its policies needs to respond particularly strongly to the needs and concerns of young people, women, and people living with disabilities. h. That the economically vulnerable have as much say in how the government works and who it serves as the prosperous and privileged. i. 
that there is no abuse of economic power by individuals or networks to manipulate or dominate political outcomes and the actions of all branches of government. J. That government visibly respects the diverse cultures and religious practices of Kenyans. 95. For the purpose of making recommendations on inclusivity that are in line with Kenyans' understanding and the other areas of recommendation, the task force will define inclusivity as the highest degree of responsiveness by decision-makers in the government to the interests of social ethnic groups and the needs and concerns of distinct constituencies, such as young people, women, people with disabilities, and elders, among others, as expressed by their elected representatives, by petition, or directly through referenda. It is also about the levels of representation, with many Kenyans increasingly speaking out about feeling underrepresented. 96. The task force found that Kenyans, at core, are motivated in their approach to voting by this conception of politics, as who gets what, when and how in the authoritative allocation of resources and values. Connected to the need for inclusion in executive power, at the national and county levels, as articulated in the section on divisive elections, is Kenyans' need for fair and equal representation. It is a core principle of inclusion and participation in our democracy that every adult has a right to vote and that every Kenyan, no matter their age, should be represented to accord to the one man, one vote democratic principle. 97. The challenge appears to be implementation. For example, Article 21, 2, compels the state to take legislative, policy and other measures, including the setting of standards, to achieve the progressive realization of the rights guaranteed under Article 43 namely health, accessible and adequate housing, adequate food of acceptable quality, clean and safe water, social security and education. Another conspicuous example is the gender makeup in Parliament. In other words, our institutions have failed us in applying inclusive strategies which would improve inclusion. 98. Kenyans and our institutions need to become more inclusive with public officers and citizens alike, recognizing and assuming their responsibilities. The aim is to focus on Kenyans' well-being and standards of living in the state's formulation and implementation of policies. This calls for a change in attitudes and our understanding of the importance of diversity. Major Recommendations 99. Kenyans are yearning for inclusivity on a political, economic, social, religious, cultural, age, and gender basis. A. Political inclusion. At the heart of citizenship is equality, as recognized by the Constitution. To guarantee equality of representation, which is fundamental to inclusion, every Kenyan vote should as much as possible have equal power at the ballot box. Please see other relevant recommendations in the chapter on divisive elections. b. Economic inclusion. The national government policies to generate economic development should be undertaken with equality and equity throughout the country. In addition, please see the recommendations in the chapter on shared prosperity. c. Protect freedom of religious association and faithful Kenyans from fraud. Ensure that all churches, mosques and temples are properly recorded in a public register and that their finances are subjected to an annual independent audit that is publicly posted where every member of the congregation can see it and submitted to the registering authority. Representatives of the Muslim community also made strong representations to the task force on wanting an appellate court within the Kadhi court system. D. Cultural inclusion. Invest in promoting and building trust in indigenous knowledge, cultural technologies embedded in traditions and practices, foods and medicines. 100. The marginalized should not marginalize others. Evident from the task force's consultations in the counties was a strong sentiment that some communities that complained about marginalization at the national level were themselves guilty of marginalizing minorities in their respective counties. It became clear that the reforms to increase inclusivity at the national level should be equally reflected at the county level. 101. The Public Participation Rapporteur. Strengthen the quality, transparency, and inclusion in public participation processes required by the Constitution by establishing an Office of the Public Participation Rapporteur. The office would be mandated to conduct all public participation on behalf of all state and non-state entities undertaking policy and operational initiatives that constitutionally require public participation. The public participation rapporteur should keep a publicly accessible and accurate record of public participation and be responsive to institutions seeking its services. In addition to the role of strengthening the transparency and effectiveness of public participation, add to the office a mandate that enables public interest litigation in a way that is insulated from supplier-vendor influence. An example of how this can work in a democracy is available in India model. 102. Transparency in Business Lobbying. 
linked to protecting public participation, minimize the disproportionate power of unelected networks and individuals that utilize economic power and even corruption to shape governance and policymaking in their own interests, leading to lower inclusion for Kenyans. In this regard, the Office of the Public Participation Rapporteur should have the legal power to record all business lobbyists who seek to interact with offices and individuals to influence legislation, policy and regulation on behalf of businesses. This record should be placed in the public domain. 103. Employment in the public service should reflect the ethnic, religious, regional and cultural face of Kenya and be free of corruption in recruitment. We note with profound concern that recruitment into the public service, and especially the disciplined services, has been corrupted with potential recruits having to pay bribes that cause many to start their careers with an act of corruption. We must innovate to solve this crisis. A. Regarding the disciplined services and forces, consider utilizing a consortium of private sector recruitment companies with internationally reputable brands to help in filling the recruitment pool for the disciplined services in a way that reflects merit and the face of Kenya. B. Ensure that recruitment into the public service reflects the face of Kenya. Where there is no candidate required to attain the face of Kenya with the right qualifications, the Public Service Commission and county governments should be empowered to undertake professional search and development for minority candidates to increase their chances of qualifying for the positions. C. The Public Service Commission should be enabled to publicize its annual report on diversity in the public service. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this audiovisual translation of the BBI report. This marks the end of Chapter 6 of the BBI report and the beginning of Chapter 7 of the 12 chapters, plus Annex 1, 2 and 3. If you have found this audiovisual report to be of help in understanding the BBI report, kindly share it link with other members of our community who may not have ample time to read the report but can manage to listen to this audiovisual report as they engage themselves in doing something else. Lastly, for the time it took us to compile this audiovisual report, we will be so much grateful if you can subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so that you can know when we upload the other chapters of the BBI report. Asenteni sana. See you in Chapter 7 of the BBI report in audiovisual format, a NAF. And it's not yet enough till we hit the last chapter. Cheers.